On clear days, you can often see long white lines being traced high in the sky. They are contrails of jet aircraft, actually long, slender clouds. Weathermen are finding them especially fascinating because a theory is being developed that those long white lines may be changing our weather for the better. Details from Roger O'Neill. The exhaust from jet engines, usually seen as long, thin trails of white clouds behind high-flying jet airplanes, may be a big reason why there are 30 fewer days of sunshine a year in the Midwest now than there were in 1900. The daily range between high and low temperatures has also narrowed. Weather researchers studying cloud cover in 10 Midwestern states found a sharp increase in cloudiness with the increase in commercial jet travel. Particularly in the main east-west jet corridor, there were even more clouds. A jet produces a contrail, or a cloud, because its exhaust consists primarily of water vapor. In the absence of natural clouds, given the correct atmospheric condition, jet aircraft in high frequency can almost completely cover the atmosphere, visible atmosphere, with clouds. Simonin says unlike most changes in the atmosphere caused by man, this one is beneficial. Clouds help farmers in the Midwest by blocking the sun. Temperature extremes can damage plants and speed up the evaporation of soil moisture. In the winter, city people benefit because clouds act as a blanket, preventing warm air from escaping into the atmosphere. No one is trying to make clouds now using jet engines, but this study suggests that jet travel is inadvertently making our days more cloudy. The Army's need to know more and more about weather that surrounds this planet is a vital part of the expanded research program of atomic weapons. We all talk about the weather. The Army is doing something about the weather. laboratory and show you a few of the experiments that led us to our outdoor experiments in converting clouds into snow. Using our home freezing unit such as this, we can form super cool clouds just like those in the natural atmosphere by taking a tiny piece of dry ice such as this and scratching it so a few tiny fragments fall into the super cool cloud. Long streaks develop. The particles grow very fast. They grow about a billion fold in volume in a few seconds. Many millions of snow crystals form, and we get the same effect as is produced by dry ice. Dry ice is, is not particularly important as far as the fact that it's CO2, but it's primarily important because it's colder than minus 35 degrees centigrade. This is a picture of the first cloud that we seeded back last November, flying in a small Fairchild plane and putting dry ice from a small dispenser in the bottom of the plane. And within a minute, saw long streamers of snow falling from the base of the cloud and evaporating into the drier air below. Under many conditions, of course, full-fledged snowstorms will be produced in this way. Nature, at last, has permitted to do a little something about the weather. Using Schaefer Langmuir techniques, the Army Signal Corps and Office of Naval Research began conducting many of these experiments. In 1947, Project Cirrus expanded to test the cloud seeding on a hurricane traveling eastbound 350 miles off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. They dropped 80 pounds of dry ice into the raging storm, only to realize that the hurricane suddenly changed direction and began traveling back towards the United States. Savannah, Georgia, was hit by record-breaking winds of up to 85 miles per hour. More than 1,500 people were left homeless, and at least two people died. The total damage was reported in the millions of dollars, and the project and its participants were blamed for what happened. On the night of the 15th of August, 1952, the worst flood in British history swept through the tiny seaside village of Lynmouth. 
90 million tons of water devastated the area, killing 35 people and leaving over 400 homeless. 40,000 tons of boulders were dragged off the moors, destroying houses and cars. Porter spoke to squadron leader Len Otley. He confirmed that he worked on Project or Operation Cumulus, which was also referred to as Operation Witch Doctor. What's more, in mid-August 1952, Alan Yates, a lecturer at Cranfield School of Aeronautics at the time, was asked to take part in cloud seeding experiments. According to Yates, the artificial rain fell over Lynmouth and washed the village into the sea. They were talking about climate change yesterday, and now we're learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right, lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, bringing down rain and even lightning. Well, I remember reading the stories that China had used this during the Olympics, that the USSR had used this after Chernobyl to create rain clouds. I mean, w did those really work then? We have some of these capabilities now? Inconclusive. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War. Governments have been playing with, with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, we realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. We're actually using trillion watt lasers now. They precipitate rain out of water vapor. Sure enough, you can actually bring down electricity down the, down the beam. The bad news is, if it's a clear blue sky, it's not going to do anything at all. Because it only takes water vapor that's already in the air and condenses it. However, you name it, outdoor events and agriculture and flooding and even hurricanes, all of them could be subject to weather modification.